Hello, we're here to talk about how to enable routing on Windows Server 2008 R2. We actually need to begin the process by installing the routing and remote access service. Go ahead and log on your server as a local administrator. Click on the Start, Administrative Tools, Server Manager. The first step is to add the role. Okay, when Server Manager launches, go ahead and click on Add Roles. And this is a little bit different than other versions of uh, the Microsoft Windows Server operating system. So let's go through the wizard. Click on Next. The server role we need to install is called Network Policy and Access Services. Enable that. Click Next. You can read through the description, then click Next. What we want is basically the routing service. When you click on that service, you're going to get a pop-up window indicating that there are services required for routing. Go ahead and add in the required role services for routing. Click Next and click install. Okay, once the wizard completes, it'll provide you with any information regarding the installation of the service. So review the information and hit close. Go ahead and close server manager. And now we need to go ahead and enable the routing and remote access service. Click on start, administrative tools, and look for routing and remote access. You'll notice the icon next to the server name shows that the service is currently disabled. We need to go ahead and enable the service. So right click and say configure and enable routing and remote access. Go ahead and click next to begin the wizard. For this demonstration we just want to set up a simple routing server so we'll go ahead and click on custom configuration. Click next. We need LAN routing. Click next and finish. Go ahead and start the service. Now you'll notice the icon next to the server name of the service as enabled. The Windows Server 2008 R2 server can not only route IPv4 but IPv6 packets as well. For this example we have two Windows XP computers on each side of the Windows server. The first computer is on the 192.168.100 network with an IP address of 1 and the second computer is 192.168.200 network with the IP address of 1. Through this router, we're going to be able to ping each of the XP workstations. Let's take a look. Okay, on the screen I have two Windows XP virtual machines. Let me go ahead and take a look at the IP configuration of the first XP machine. And you'll notice the IP address is 192.168.100.1, just like in the diagram. I'll do the same thing for the second machine. And as the diagram depicted, 192.168.200.1. If I try to ping the first machine from the second, you'll notice that I'm actually able to ping it from this XP machine. Just to ensure that we're going through the router, we can do a trace RT command. So you should immediately notice from the from the results of the trace route that we actually went through the router to get to the target system. The first hop was the router's interface on our same subnet, 192.168.200.254. We could do the same thing from the first computer. You'll notice on this side we hit the 182.168.100.254 interface of the router. Let's go ahead and perform another test and turn off routing during the test. So let's set up a continuous ping to our other workstation and rather than getting four replies it'll continue. Now let's go back to the router and let's go ahead and disable the service. Let's go back to the workstations. And the ser routing service finally shut itself down, and the requests are now timing out. Now the server itself is online because I can ping it from this machine. See, I do get a reply from the router's interface. However, if I want to ping something on the remote subnet, such as the other workstation, or even the other side of the router's interface, I don't get any replies back. Let's go ahead and ping the other uh, Windows XP workstation. It will do a continuous ping. And let's go ahead and re-enable the routing and remote access service. So let's go ahead and configure it. Do a custom again. Just want to do LAN routing. And finish. Start the service. And there you go. Well, that's it for this 
uh, demonstration on how to set up routing on a Windows 2008 R2 server. Thank you for watching.